Revenge is something that itches in the back of your head, gnawing at your mind, convincing you to commit heinous acts so that you can get even. But what happens after you get revenge? You get revenge on someone else, obviously. Pike is a fisherman who gets really pissed at society, and with a bit of help from fish gods, he starts to make it everyone else's problem. If you like playing support, but want to be a concealed carry, who can sprint around the entire map like it's nothing, then Pike might become your new main. Hey bro, what's mm. his problem? Hey, yo. Boom, what I'm doing? Mm. Yeah, I'm out, bye. Thank you for the heal. Yeah, no problem. Recognizing the true carry. Fucking with you, man. You're the one with. Never mind. <laughs> As Pike, you dive headfirst into a pool of enemies, seeing them all one by one, until a school becomes a student. The student becomes another name crossed off the list. <laughs> Alright, enough of theatrics. Let's get into the meat, or fish and potatoes, of Pike, the Blood Harbor Ripper. Oh, and if you don't care about lore stuff, uh, skip to this time right here. That'll take you to the abilities and whatnot. So, there you go. Pike started working in the slaughter docks at a young age. Specifically, he gutted fish in Blood Arbor, which got its name for being fucking filthy. After flying fish for peanuts, Pike started to envy the captains and crew getting filthy rich off sailing. So, he began to use his talents on live fish. You see... In Runeterra, there are a lot of dangerous creatures that lurk in the deep blue. A lot of these rivaled in size to some islands. No one in their right mind would fuck with them. But Bilgerats are some crazy motherfuckers, and they need golden krakens for food and booze, baby. Pike made a new living off of diving down and butchering these fish, collecting organs, scales, and anything else of value. Obviously, before he went down, his crew wrapped the beasts in rope and hooks so that he wouldn't be eaten alive like Pinocchio. Pike was so good at not getting eaten alive that he was hired to hunt what has to be the deadliest catch in all of Runeterra, the jawfish. Can we, um, can we get a visual? Okay, yeah, so it's at least the size of 50 Andre the Giants, I'm gonna say. It has 20 rows of teeth and... Fluffy fins. Cute, I suppose. So yeah, Pike's job was to go in between this beast's teeth and grab some magic sacks worth a mini fortune. It was his biggest job, and he probably could have just quit if it went well. If it went well. Jawfish are notorious for a reason, though, and this one was no exception. It thrashed and screamed at its restraints, demanding its freedom. And, since Pike's captain was such a bitch, he freed the creature, and he cut Pike's lifeline, leaving him to sink into the maw of the jawfish. His last memory watching his crew's horrified faces as the teeth closed. Pike was swallowed by the monster. Usually, being eaten by a giant fish ends the story, right? Well, not this time. While submerged in the belly of the beast, Pike started to hear voices. The voices urged him to take revenge on his crew and captain. His mind corrupted by the abyssal and ancient, Pike now stalks Bilgewater, butchering his old crew and marking their name off his list. Curiously, every time his list ends, a new name seems to write itself. Even though Pike doesn't exactly remember them too much... He eventually recognizes their face watching him sink to the depths and continues to act out his revenge. Just to be clear, his crew had maybe 20 people in it. Pike has killed so many captains and even more of their crew. So I think everyone who knew Pike is long gone. But just as he says, he's just getting started. Die, die, please, 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 please. We're all... <laughs> Don't worry, your grom's up, which means I'm gonna see him right there. Uh, uh... Oh, what the fuck? 
Dude, get the fuck out of my fish. sight. It's so, it's oh, so, it like, it's so that. gross how they think that they can match me, bro. Get the fuck out of here. His story is pretty interesting, actually, when contrasted with Akshan's. Akshan fights to avenge others and take down evil, even if it ruins his relations. On the other hand, Pike kills to avenge himself, even that includes the innocent, or, well, innocent. It's Bilgewater. No one has clean hands. His harpoon is a fine tool, but Pike has been given many abilities from down below. Let me go ahead and tell you about him. Gift of the Drowned One stockpiles a percentage of damage Pike takes and heals it back once he gets out of enemy vision. The rate of health stored increases if there are multiple champions around. As a trade-off, Pike cannot gain max health in any way other than leveling up. Any excess health stats are converted into damage instead. The skill is quite beneficial and requires little to no thinking about it. It is a passive ability, after all. It allows you to constantly pick fights and take poke without having to back every 5 seconds. Pike is an all or nothing kind of champ, so sustaining even a little bit is necessary, and this passive gives him that ability. Pretty neat, pretty fun, you don't even need to buy pots at the start if you don't want to. Pike's Q is Bone Skewer. If you tap, then Pike stabs in front of him, focusing champions. If you hold it, the skewer becomes a skill shot that pulls the target hit towards Pike and slows them for one second. The Bone Skewer is Pike's bread and butter. If you can't hit hooks, you're going to be miserable playing Pike, but eventually the more you play, you'll start feeling the rhythm. Try not to steal kills with it though, remember that you're a support, and you're only allowed to steal kills with your R, which we will get to later. Oh, Yoink. Oh, nice one. Thank oh, you. I stopped her. Good luck. I'm dead. Holy goddamn shit. Slive the lad. Holy. I got myself. It doesn't stop. Oh! What yes. the? Yeah, baby! Let's go! Bone Skewer is vital for engage in the laning phase. If you miss the Q, don't bother going in, because you missed significant damage, and your follow up will be way too fragile, and they can dodge it way too easy. Ghostwater Dive camouflages Pike for 5 seconds while giving him move speed that decays over the ability's duration. Enemies will know you're invisible due to a sound cue and sharks around their feet, but this move is what makes Pike such a threat. Just one click and you become a mix of Barry Allen and the Predator. You'll be zooming whether you mean to or not, and I assure you that the enemies will not be ready for it. You flashed, didn't you? Maybe you have W? No, you do not. Don't worry though, watch this. My inventory is full of long swords. I can't possibly lose. Or I feed again. But that's like not possible, right? Yum! Easy. Phantom Undertow is Pike's E. When cast, Pike dashes in the direction of your mouse. The dash leaves a phantasm where he originally was. After a moment, the clone comes back to Pike, stunning anyone who touches it. This is Pike's best CC, and while it is powerful, it's a little tough to land. It doesn't take too much time to learn, and it pairs wonderfully with your Q slow, so I'm sure you'll be making perfect conga lines in no time. Uh, do be careful though. This move requires a lot of courage and some big fucking balls, because you are going to be sending it straight at the enemy so and i'm a coward in real life but on stream i have big balls you know me i'm known for having testicles it's a fact all right time for the big guns pike's r is what turns him from a support to a support and that being said death from below does no damage uh like it, it scales with ad and lethality but generally it's useless damage garbage You know that? Get over here! Yes, I fuck your mother. Hold on, it. Oh, what if I went and asked your suit on? Oh, no. no, please! I'm sorry! I didn't mean it! Vladimir, beat her ass! Beat her ass! There it is. Now the execute, though. That shit is juicy. <laughs> That's a good one. Thank you. Uh. 
Okay, so after an enemy champ gets under a certain amount of health, their health bar will turn red. If you hit an alt on an enemy with red health, the champion is executed. Pike can recast this ability in the next 20 seconds if an enemy champ dies in the X. Now, you may feel invincible while using this move, but rest assured you are not. This is advice from experience. Mew. Fuck, man. Shit! Hey, good kill for me, though. Look at that. I did it. What <laughs> the fuck? Uh, of course I got that kill. Along with all these benefits, Pike also gives extra gold to allies in the form of an item called Your Cut. I would try to explain it more, but Pike does a fine job of it. Part of the kill, part of the gold. Uh, basically, instead of assist gold, the last ally to damage a champ who is killed by Pike R gets a bunch of gold. If Pike gets a solo kill with his R, then he gets two cuts instead of one. Oh my god, Set! You're so handsome! How handsome of you, Set. That was very cool. I wish I was there more. Get over here. Oh! Damn. I didn't... I got my money, though. Hey, watch this bank, though. Actually, look at this. I'll zoom in. Oh, my... Oh! This move gives Pike his playmaking potential. You can either go all in by yourself and do what the carries can't. Would it be a shame, Senna? Get the fuck over here. Whoa, hey! Nope. Or you can be the opportunist and be on the edge of the fight, coming in with alts once everyone is softened up. Oh, I got it with my ult, nice. I mean, my smite. Either way, you're gonna feel like a boss bitch using this move. There's nothing more satisfying in this game that I know of. It's just chef's kiss, you know? It's just so good. Uh, all right, runes and builds. Go this. I say it every time, but this is a beginner's guide. Just copy what you GG says. Get Blitz or anything else. It's too much to think about. I just don't think it's a good idea to experiment when you're learning. But, if you're ahead and have money burning a hole in your pocket, you could maybe buy a collector. It's It sounds weird, but if you're planning on carrying and you already steal kills with your R, what's another execute, right? Help, help, help. Here, here. Oh, I guess I'm carrying now. I'm going collector. Don't no stop me. I'm building the dumb build. I'm building the manlet build. Skill max is QDW. No questions asked. Like I said earlier, Q is your bread and butter. You'll be using it the most, so level it up first. The lower your E cooldown is, the more times you can leave shitty situations. So level it up second. And W is... Fine. It's not important enough to max before the other skills, though. Now, on to matchups. The three worst pike matchups, according to Blitz, are Zerath, Zyra, and Zillion. Just like last time, I don't exactly have an explanation, but I can hazard a guess. Zerath is plain annoying. The dude can hit you from a turret and hides behind everything and everyone. With him staying so far away, it's hard to hit your hook. And even when you do, you can't combo with your E either, because he's either too far away or he's under tower. So you just dive into your death. Zyra is another poke champ, so it's basically the same issues with Zerath, but even more annoying because of her plants. Zillion isn't too bad until he gets R. So there are a few weird interactions with Pike ult. If you get a kill with the ult, but you wouldn't get gold from the kill, then you don't get the extra gold and your ult cooldown doesn't refresh. So Zillion R, Guardian Angel, Trindamir R, just straight up ruin you. It's a pain in the ass. Don't even get me fucking started on Lissandra 
or Kindred or Scion. Oh. Look who's here. There we go. That doesn't count. That's bullshit. It literally has a champion marker. Why doesn't Scion count? Now, the League community is shit, but some people actually want to help newer players. Here are some tips that I got from the Pike Reddit. Thank you all again for all your help. It really means a lot. Parlaying Freedom says, don't be afraid to E first. A straightforward tip, but it's very effective. When you're learning, it's better to limit test and learn rather than play safe all the time, and you can do that with all of your abilities. See, since without failure, there isn't much to be taught. I'm sick. I'm sick of you. I'm, I'm tired, tired of you. you. Tired of this shit. Yeah. No, I'm not dealing with that shit. Polls 1987 has a bunch of helpful information, so let's lightning round it. Read people's jokes with Q. Very true. In higher levels, enemies will always try to dodge you, so make sure to account for that. Be aware of when your enemies have their summoner spells. If you try to R and they flash or heal to survive it, you'll feel very, very dumb. Look to stomp your lane in Rome. The more advantages you give to all your allies early game, the less likely you are to make it to late game, which Pike struggles the most due to his health and the enemy's items, Garden Angel, Zanyas, etc. When you're fighting in lane, focus on the enemy ADC because they do a lot of damage and you don't have a lot of health to spare. And finally, E flash is your best combo. Very true. It's very hell and it's hella satisfying to land on an unsuspecting victim. I don't get to leave. Burn. Okay! Boom, baby! Fuck you! The last tip I got from Reddit came from AS-AB, saying, and I quote, You smell. This is very true. Pike might be a living corpse in the sea, but you aren't. Remember to take a damn shower. Alright, that's the helpful game stuff done. Let's move to the library to check out what stories Pike has been in. What? What do you mean, story? What do you mean? It's a five-minute read? What? Well, Sunder had like 53 stories. W why isn't Pike getting any love? He just got released in Legend of Runeterra! He's gonna be in the Ruined King game! He's a sentinel! Alright, so... He might be only in one story, but... Pike is a part of the audio telling Legends of Bilgewater. Uh, he's in the last section, and it only lasts three minutes. But it's something, I guess. Honestly, it's a pretty cool three minutes, Pike yelling at the narrator that they watched him drown before sinking his harpoon and leaving them to rot in their own piss. Pretty cool. Not a lot of substance, though. Then Teeth is a story done by my man, Matt Dunn. Yeah, baby. Oh. Uh, um, uh, <clears throat> um, so so the, the story starts off with Pike killing another build rat. He remembers this woman's eyes looking down at him as he drowned. His anger subsides, and Pike marks the last name off of his list. And then he sees some drunkard and feels like he's seen him somewhere before. In an instant, he presses his knife up to the man's neck and asks for their name. Beak Nid. Pike looks at his list again, and th there it is. Beak Nid, right at the bottom, signed in red. Don't know how I didn't see it first the first time. It takes a moment, but Pike remembers Beak's rancid face on the ship, smiling as Pike was swallowed by the jawfish. Needless to say, Beak suffers for the crimes that he most likely didn't commit. The story is perfect for its size. It tells all of Pike's motivations, abilities, ruthlessness, and ties to the depths. I hope we get another story that explains more of what gave Pike his powers, but this is nice enough right now. It's got some great writing and a solid understanding of Pike's character and how much he's been controlled and manipulated to cause a lot of pain topside. I gave it a solid 8 out of 10. If I had more writings that develop Pike more, I would love the story more. But it leaves me wanting more in the worst way. It has nothing to do with Mr. Dunn. Still love the guy. Oh my. Matt Dunn. And that's Pike. Slink into the water and pop up to have the enemy drown with you. I love this champ. The playmaking potential, the voice lines, and his appearance make him such a badass and fun character. I, I may have a bias, as I accidentally simp for the serial killer character in any media, 
but um we don't talk about it oh I, I do have one problem with him though why is he the blood harbor ripper and not the blood harbor butcher does riot not like alliteration what the hell my butcher sounds so much better ripper sounds fucking stupid it's just a silly choice let's see you get mouthy with a harpoon in your neck <laughs> good good one um let, let's just, let's just run a clip um, it's probably a different game oh you're clean oh you're <laughs> my kill me pike me pike me get kill me get six me steal kill yo pike hey help Yo, what do you mean, AOL? AOL? <laughs> I needed help. <laughs> See, and now you get this kill. True. It's all paid Support forward. Dev. Exactly. Support dev. Exactly. Exactly. You're welcome. And that's the end of this video. I have been trying to push this one out for so long. I've been working so hard to try and get this out very quickly because I need to start the next video ASAP. I hope you all enjoy it. I hope you know, did anything, uh, follow me on Twitch, uh, TikTok, Twitter, the tree, the tree tees, um, subscribe if you haven't already, I appreciate a lot, um, try to guess who the next character is if you want, your choice, obviously, uh, I gotta head out and start working on the next one, because I'm gonna try and pump these out a little more, uh, have a good one. Hey! <laughs> True, didn't say the game, didn't say the game. I got, A, I got Ness. Hey, the most honors in the game. Thank you, fellas. I'd like to thank my mom. Uh, uh, and yeah, what? That's it. No, not my teammates. Fuck those guys. What? <laughs> wow. Wow, this guy's toxic. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. <laughs>